book got back and they got sick, amen. So be remembering them, lifting them up in prayer. Uh, turn to your neighbor, shake their hand, and tell them I'm glad to see you this morning. Glad to see you all, young fellas, today.
his ocean. Man. in the fiery trials of life. And we looked at 1 Peter chapter 1, 
And we talked about uh, uh, things that we need to do and the obedience that we need to walk in when we are going through those fiery trials. And I feel this morning uh, continually led to preach a little bit more on this idea of uh, fiery trials. Or this morning my focus is going to be what I'm going to call the refiner's fire. Yeah. The refiner's fire. Uh, we are, as you were just singing about, there are times that we are destined to go through those fiery flames of life, amen. But there is a purpose, there is a reason for those things uh, that we go through. God doesn't waste anything. God does not waste the difficult times of your life. God is not wasting the times of waiting and sorrow and loneliness and brokenness. Uh, do not think that in God's timetable all of that is wasted in your life. God is doing something yeah. with it. And I want to show you that again from Scripture uh, this morning. Amen. Fiery trials of, of life. I want to read 1 Peter chapter 1, which is the basis of this little series. I guess I've been doing what wasn't planning on it, but if we had a series, it would be the fiery trials. If we read in 1 Peter chapter 1, it says, In this you greatly rejoice. Though for now, now for a little while, if need be. See, if God sees fit, we need to go through some things. He'll let us go through some things. He said, if need be, if you need this, if he needs to work on you, if he needs to produce something in you, you can count on it. He's going to send you some things. That you have been grieved by various trials. There's a reason here. That. That, the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold yes, that perishes, though it is tested by fire, that it may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation yes, of Jesus Christ. I want you to notice something right there. The Lord desires that we bring Him praise, right. honor, and glory. Amen. Yes, you know that? That our lives are to be to His glory, to His honor. As believers, as Christians, we are to have lives that honestly speak to the Father, speak to the Son, and all that they have done for us to glorify. That is what we were made for. I want to remind you that we were made for Him. The Bible says in Colossians yes. that everything that has been made by Him and for Him. He was not made for us, but we were made for Him and we were made for His glory and for His honor. And in order for our lives to do that to the fullest, sometimes we've got to go through the refiner's fire. Amen. In order to really bring our God glory and honor, He's got to send us through the refiner's fire because there's some things in our life that are hindering, hindering us from bringing glory to our King. This morning, I want us to look at a young man that we find in the Bible that God sent through the refiner's fire. And his name was Joseph. Maybe you have heard of him. When we first meet Joseph, he was only 17 years of age. Amen. And the Bible shows us that he had some issues of the heart. Uh, and he had some things in his life that were hindering him from his true destiny. But that's okay. Because God is patient. Right. And God is loving, yes. and He will work on us until He gets us the way that He wants us. Amen. Yes, I want you to look with me in Genesis chapter 37 and begin in verse 1. We're going to read 11 verses of Scripture here today. It says this, Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was, was a stranger in the land of Canaan. This is his, the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Billa and the sons of Zilpha. In other words, they had the same dad, but they had different mothers. Okay. If you understand about, uh, about, uh, about Jacob's story, he had 12 sons, had them from different, through different women. His father's wives and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because uh, jo loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tunic or a coat, we call it, of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all of his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Now, Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. There, there, 
There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheep stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brothers said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dream and for his words. But then he dreamed another dream still, and he told it to his brothers again. And he said, look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, the stars, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and to his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come and bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept these matters in, his, in mind. Amen. Let's stop right there and pray over the reading of God's Word. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you for the privilege to be in this place. Thank you for the good singing and worship that we've had. And now as we break the bread of life, we ask for your anointing to continue to anoint my heart, anoint my lips of clay, that I may speak according to your desire for these people to hear today. I pray, God, it would stir our hearts. It would encourage those this morning that are going through life's fiery trials. God, may this encourage them. May this strengthen them. And God, may it help them to press on, God, and to trust you in what you are doing in their lives. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In the name of Jesus, and everybody say it. Amen. 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 And amen. As I said a minute ago, that, that life's fiery trials serve a purpose. That God works on us through those times in our lives. And as we keep that in mind, I want us to look at Brother Joseph here for just a minute. And I want to point out two things specifically about him that God was going to work on as he sent him through the refiner's fire. First of all, as we see right here in this text, that Joseph was immature. Come on. Joseph was immature. The Bible says that he was 17 years old. Oh, do you know what we call that? We call that this day and time. We call it, he was still wet behind the ears. Y'all ever use, y'all use that phrase in here? You were still wet behind uh, the ears. He, he thought that he knew it all. He thought that he knew where his life was going. He had it all together, amen. And he knew everything and you couldn't tell him any different. Does anybody remember being like that when you were 17 years old, amen? You had it all figured out. Mom and daddy couldn't tell you anything. You knew exactly the direction in which you were heading. And then something hit you about 25 or 30. And you said, wow, this wasn't what I thought life was going to look like. Things have certainly changed. Amen. Now, he was, he was honestly, he was, he was immature. He hadn't grown up yet. He still had a lot of growing up to do at 17 years of age. And, and if there's anybody that's in here today that is a teenager, don't take offense to that. Because we've all been at that age before. We've all been teenagers. And I'm going to tell you something. As I look back 20 years ago, I think about how ignorant that I was. Not stupid, but ignorant. There's a lot of things, Brother Bobby, I just didn't know. It amazes me how much experience teaches you along the way. It amazes me. You know, so used, to, used to, I would say, well, brother, say, I wish I could go back. I wish I could go back to being 20 years old or whatever the case may be. I wouldn't, if I had to go back and relearn all of the lessons that I have learned in the last 15 years, no, sir. I'll stay right here where I am. I'll keep my grades that are coming in and every wrinkles and everything else. But I don't want to go back and relearn all the rough lessons that I had to learn. Joseph, we see in this story, had some immaturity. He had some things he had to grow out of. The Bible also tells us this about him, that he was a tattletale. He was a tattletale. He was a snitch, in other words. And he would go out to the field where his older brothers were, and then he would return, and he would tell his father all that they had been up to. They could do nothing around him because he would tell on them, and he would continually betray their confidence. Now listen to me carefully. There are times that, yes, that we need to speak up if there's some, uh, some major thing, amen. But, listen to what I'm about to say. But our motives for betraying a confidence better be right. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Our motives better be right if we go to tattletelling on somebody. Yeah. Listen what I'm about to say. Snitching 
is usually done in some interest of a payoff. Right. Being a tattletale or a snitch is normally done with some interest of a payoff. Let me put it like this, Joseph's mentality. If I tell on my brothers and I make them look bad, it makes me look good. Right. Come on. You ever thought about that? Amen. You mean tell me y'all ain't done that to you? When y'all were growing up, you didn't do that to your brother or your sister? You snitched on them, you wanted to tattletale on them, but because it made you look good. Look, there I'm the golden child, Mama. I'm the golden child, Daddy. I don't do anything wrong, but look at them. Look at them other kids you had over there. Amen. There was an incentive there. Do you understand that? Come on, that's human nature. Come on now. Immaturity. I want to look good. I want to look good. I'll be the golden child. But he was not interested necessarily just doing the right thing. He was, he was interested in looking good to his father. My point is this. Joseph had some growing up to do. Joseph was immature. The second thing I want to point out to you in this story is Joseph was prideful. Joseph was prideful. In this event... It took place about him being a tattletale. That proves it a little bit. But also in the way that he told his brothers about his dream. Get this. He told, tells his brothers not but once, but two different times about two different dreams they were going to bow, bow down to. Joseph took pride in those dreams that he had. By, the, by saying that, I mean this, that he was puffed up a little bit by it. How do I know that? The Bible says that his brothers despised him. Yeah. They despised him because he was a tattletale. Come on. And they also despised him because they, he had a coat of, of many colors. I just want to say this to you parents in here today. That favoritism is a poison in the heart of your children. Yeah, yeah. They just figure out when somebody despises you. Notice the word they use the word despise and hate. It don't take a rocket scientist, Brother Michael... To figure out when somebody just flat out does not like you, right. they can completely oblivious to that fact. I believe he was oblivious to that fact. He already had his head tattletale. He wore his coat around everywhere that he went to. And then he tells them the first dream, but that's not all. Come on. He goes back and he after he saw their reaction, after he saw, don't you know they had it all on their face? You think we're going to bow down to you? Who, who do you think you are, little brother? You think that the older is going to bow down to the, to, to the younger? Come on. But, but he didn't stop there. He had another dream. And he goes back and he, tell, he says, well, look, listen, again. And he tells them this second dream. You know what he was doing? This is just my way of thinking. I'm looking at this thing. That is a young, immature boy. I believe he was somewhat rubbing it in. As he stood there in his special coat, he says, oh, I've had two dreams now that y'all are going to bow down to me one day. Come on. He was immature, and there were some issues of pride that was in his heart. He studied that out. There were some issues. There was he was immature. There was an age of immature, but also there were some issues of pride in his heart. He was just solely looking at that dream as himself being somewhat exalted in this picture. Amen. Mm. What should Joseph have done? He should have kept his mouth shut. Yeah. Just a word to the wise. Sometimes it's better to keep uh, your mouth shut. Right. Now there is no doubt as I stand before you this morning that those dreams uh, that Joseph had, they were from God. And God had great big plans uh, for that man. But it's in his current spiritual condition, God could not use him and receive the praise, glory, and honor as he desired. Come on. So what is God to do? What is God to do with an immature and a prideful man? I'll tell you, it says in Malachi chapter 3, Who can endure the day of His coming and who can stand when He appears? He is like the refiner's fire and the launderer's soap. He, he will stick at the refiner and purify as silver. He will purify the sons of Levi, purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness. I'll tell you God's answer uh, to our pridefulness. I'll tell you the, the answer to, to our, uh, our immaturity. It's the refiner's fire. Amen. God had just the thing 
to prepare this young man for the destiny in which he had for him. It was a refiner's fire. Now, it didn't come as a literal, fr literal fire as the three Hebrew boys. But guess what? Joseph, this young man, spent the next 13 years going through some of the roughest times of his life. He was first after this dream happened. Guess what? His brothers conspired against him because they were so mad against him. They were going to kill him. One of their brothers talked him out of it and said, no, let's not harm him. So they threw him in a well in a pit. And then they sold him into slavery. He goes and makes his way down to Egypt. There he finds a job as a servant there. God blesses him, but somebody lies on him. A scorned woman lies on him, and he ends up in prison. And he's there. A total of, of all this betrayal and brokenness. He spends 13 long years of, in the refiner's fire. Often, I'm sure, feeling lonely, forsaken, and feeling that he was forgotten. Forgotten by his brothers. Forgotten by his previous employer. Forgotten by the butler who said he was going to tell uh, the Pharaoh about him. But guess what? He was never forgotten about by God. God had him right where Joseph needed to be. And that was in the refiner's fire. And I believe that there may be some folks in here this morning that you feel forsaken or you feel forgotten about. Maybe because of something your family has done. Maybe it's something your children or your parents, your brothers, like Joseph. Maybe a friend has forgotten you in your time of need. You may be forsaken and you may be forgotten by the world. But friend, I tell you today, God has not forgotten you. Amen. If you are in the refiner's fire, you're right where He wants you to be. Thank you, Lord. Oh, ain't too many amens on that this morning. Yes, Lord. We all looking for the exit door. Come on. When it comes to trials and tribulations and fires in our life, we all want the quickest exit out. Yes, right. But Joseph spent 13 years yes, Lord. Woo, being refined by God Amen. through trials and tribulations to prepare him for what God had in right. store for him. Yeah. So if you're in the fiery trials right now, Thank you, Lord. oh, don't cuss them. Thank you, Lord. Don't just look out and say, I want to get out of here. You understand this morning, you're not forgotten by God, but God is at work in your life. Right now. Lord, that He is doing something in you that you may not fully understand right now. And by faith, you must trust yeah. Him to keep your head down and to keep going and putting one foot after the other and moving forward because you're eventually going to come forward. Amen. And you're going to come forward like gold. Yeah. It's in the refiner's fire that prepares you for what's next on God's agenda. Right. Yes, God. It's the refiner's fire that prepares you for what is next on God's and His life through this refining fire. Number one is this. In the fire, Joseph's gifts were refined. Amen. In the fiery furnace, in the refiner's fire, that 13 years of, of prison, of a pit, being sold into slavery, yes, and then Lord. being lied on and ended up in prison, all of that time, God was working in Joseph's life and refining the gifts that he had put in Joseph. Thank you, Lord. You say, okay, Pastor, what in the world are you talking about? Come on. This, this story starts out with what? Dreams, doesn't it? This story starts out with dreams. And I want us to look back at it just quickly at verse 6 to those dreams. I want you to notice something about this. The Lord showed this to me. He says this, Please hear this dream which I have dreamed. They were binding of the sheaves in the field. They belonged. Then, then, they, then behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And indeed, your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my and he said, look, and this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. And he told it to his father, his brothers, and his father there uh, rebuked him. Now his brothers gave an interpretation there to what they thought that dream meant, but Joseph did not. 
There was no further interpretation. All that Joseph did was give them the two dreams in which he dreamed. As a matter of fact, he got a nickname from that. His brothers from that point called him the dreamer. But they didn't know that it was actually prophetic. Because Joseph was going to be a dreamer, but also he was going to be the interpreter of dreams. Yes. He was going to be the interpreter of dreams. Amen. He was going to, to interpret dreams for other people. And in these verses, we see the beginning of his gift, but that was not the final product. Amen. His gift had to be refined. Right. Now, jump with me to Genesis chapter 40. Joseph now is in prison. He's been going through the refiner's fire close to 10 years at this point. And while he is in the prison, he meets a butler and he meets a baker. Right. And both of them on the same night had a dream. The butler had a dream and the baker had a dream. Joseph comes in, he sees the distraught look upon their face and he says, will you tell me your dream?" He says, God will give the interpretation of these dreams. He said, tell me. So the butler told him his dream, and then the baker told him his dream. And guess what happened? We see this. Joseph gives a full interpretation yeah. to what the butler's dream was and what the baker's dream was. He told the butler, he said, you're going to be restored yeah, to the Pharaoh's council. You'll be restored to the Pharaoh's house, back to your position but he said to, to the baker, I've got some good news. I've got some bad news for you. You're going to die. Amen. To begin with, we see him having dreams, but not giving any interpretation into it. But here, after he's been in the refiner's fire almost 10 years, now he's giving some depth and interpretation to what dreams mean. And this is what the Lord was speaking to me in my heart, that it is through the refining times of life, through the fires of life, that God will refine the very gift that He's placed inside of you. Things that He has called you to, things that He has equipped you with, a special anointing and gifts and talents that are within you, it is through times of Come testing on. and trying that God will bring those right. things forth in your life. It was the refiner's fire that God was refining Joseph's gifts. Because get this, understand that it was his gift that was going to position him in the end. Amen. This very gift of dreams and in the interpretation of dreams was going to position him and open doors for him in the end. Right. Proverbs says this in chapter 18. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Yes, I wonder when Saul, if Solomon wrote this if he had old Joseph in mind. Because remember after the incident with the butler and the baker, he interprets their dream. And just as Joseph said, the butler is restored, right. the baker dies. Joseph told the butler, he says, don't forget about me when you get to Pharaoh's house, when you get to the palace. He said, don't forget about me. Well, guess what? He forgot about him. Amen. And Joseph stayed in the prison for two more years. But guess what? Then one day, old Joseph came back to, to the butler's mind. Come on. Because see, the Bible says that the Pharaoh had a dream that no one could interpret. And the butler said, wait a minute, I remember a man that when I was in the prison, when I was in them old fiery fires of life, I remember a man Come on. who was able to give me an interpretation for my dream and also for the baker's dream. And the Bible says that here Joseph was now that he was called up from the prison. They cleaned him up, brought him before Pharaoh. This man has been in prison, the stench of a prison for all these years, 13 years in the refiner's fire, is brought before this Pharaoh and his dream is told. He's told, uh, the Pharaoh tells him his dream and Joseph gives the interpretation he said there's going to be seven years of plenty and there's going to be seven years of drought and famine. Amen. 
The, the Pharaoh was moved so much. He said, I know this is a work and interpretation from God. He says, I want you to be over everything that I have. And you're going to organize a, a, a saving plan for the next seven years. And we're going to harvest the grain. And we're going to save it up to carry us through those seven years of, of famine. But notice this, it was his gift that God had placed in him and his anointing that opened a door for him. His gift brought him before great men. But it was refined in the fire. It was refined in the fire. It was through the trying times of life that Joseph learned to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of God speak to him that he might give that interpretation. It is through those trying times, right. those lonely hours, that he got to uh, acclimated and he got accustomed to the voice so that he could hear him when he was brought before this great man of Egypt. Yeah. Understand something, that God has placed some things in you. Right. Come on. And that God will allow you to go through some very difficult Amen. times to bring those things out, to bring those gifts to maturity, to bring you to maturity. Come on. Yeah. And it's through those things, those gifts inside of you, that God will also open up doors yes, to your destiny. Yes, Ooh, are y'all with me? Y'all following yeah. me? Yeah. Sink this in. Let this sink in with you today. God knows what He's doing. Right. I told you this morning as we opened that God wants our life to bring Him praise, honor, and glory. In order for that to happen, He's got to refine us. He's got to refine us. Joseph went through the fiery refiner that His gifts may be brought forth. But secondly this, it's in the fire Joseph's perspective was refined. It's in the fire that Joseph's perspective was refined. Refined. Yes, God. Earlier I spoke about how Joseph had pride in his heart. He was somewhat puffed up uh, and didn't know when to keep his mouth shut, did he? Wow. This is what I want you to see. When Joseph had those first dreams, Joseph was more so fixated on himself in those dreams. That I'm going to be somebody. That these dreams are telling me that I'm going to be somebody and other people are going to come down and to bow down towards me. In other words, his perspective was inward. He was looking at himself and what it means simply for him. But he missed the reason God was going to allow this to happen. Joseph thought those dreams were all about him. But he was just going to be the vessel in which God was going to use. Yes, it was never about Joseph getting glory or honor or recognition. It was about just being a vessel to be used by God. Amen. See, the fire changed Joseph's perspective in two ways. Instead of being looking inwards, focusing on himself, he became more God-focused. Come on. Instead of just looking inward about what I'm going to be, yes, what this means for me, after he went through 13 years of hell on earth, he was more God-focused. What do you mean by that? 20 years after he had those dreams, he wasn't talking about himself anymore. He wasn't talking about his brothers anymore. I want you to listen to what it says in chapter 45. It says, then Joseph, this is when his brothers, 20 years later, he'd been sold in, he had his dream, he was sold into slavery, he was in that for 13 years. And now there's completed seven years of plentiful, and they've gone into a time of famine. Actually, it's about 22 years later. His brothers come down there looking for grain, oh, looking okay. for something to eat. And the Bible says that Joseph could no longer restrain himself when he saw his brothers this second time. And all of those stood by him, and he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So that no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were in dismay in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. So they came near, then he said to them, 
He said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now, do not therefore be grieved or angry uh, with yourselves because you sold me here. For God yes, sent me before you to preserve life. Notice, I want you to notice in this short, when he's talking to his brothers, he continually points at the hand of God working yes, in his life. Yes, he said, you might have sold me into slavery. Come on, come he on. said, but God's the one really sent me here. He said, for God sent me here to use me to preserve life. Yes, for these two years of the famine has been in the land, and there are still five more years to come. come and God sent me, notice he says it again, and God sent me before you to preserve a prosperity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. Yes, so now it is not you who sent me here, but God... Yes, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and the Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout the land of Egypt. He was not bitter. He was not neither looking within himself about his greatness. And I'm somebody. And he wasn't saying, look at the, the threads that I've got now. That I'm the second in command of, over all of Egypt. But he kept pointing back to God. He said, look what God did. Look what God did. Look what God did. He wasn't concerned about where he was nor the position. Oh, look at me, brothers. Look at the rings and the gold that's on my hand. He said, God brought me to this place. God brought me to this place. God brought me to this place. Me to this place. Yes, he had a God perspective. Yes, Lord. He wasn't just about himself. Right. Wasn't looking inwardly. He said, look at what God's doing. Look what God is doing. You, through all of this, through this course of events. God has led me right where I need to be. He had a God perspective. It changed him. You don't go through 13 years of the refiner's fire and not come out changed. Amen. He was changed. His perspective was changed. The second thing that was changed is this. First of all, he was more God focused. But then also he became more ministry minded. When he was going through that refiner's fire, he became more focused on God than ever before. And secondly, he became ministry minded. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Look at Genesis chapter 50. This is another part of this conclusion. He says, but as for you, speaking to his brothers again, you meant it for evil, Come on. but God meant it for good. In order to bring about, as it is this day, Lord. To save many people alive. Yes, Lord. Notice this. He, he gives glory to God. He yes. says, God has brought me here. God has brought me here. And he said, there was a purpose, though, that I may minister yes, to other people. He understood that his life was just not all about himself. His life was not about just him doing what he wanted to do and going his own path. He said, but God has been guiding my steps. And now I see he's been guiding me that I may save and I may help other people. Amen. Sometimes we get so self-centered and self, so self-focused, we forgot that we are in the palm of a great God that has got our lives there for a purpose and a reason, but we are so busy chasing after what we want, we don't focus on the purpose that God has for us. And Joseph was transformed at this point. He was no longer just concerned about himself and what he wanted. He says, I understand now when after I went through the refiner's fire that God has given me gifts and that I have a purpose in His will and that was to be used by Him to save many people. Can I tell you something? That you are no different than God has placed within you gifts to use for His glory. Gifts that will accompany the promise, the purpose, excuse me, that God has for you. If you would just surrender and say, God, all right, Lord, I want to fulfill your purpose. I want to walk after you. Instead of you following after me, I want to follow you, Lord. I want to walk in your purposes. He was more God-minded. And he understood. He understood that God wanted to use him as a vessel. God wants to use you, friend. Look at your neighbor and tell them, help me because y'all fall asleep. God wants to use you this morning. God wants to use you. God wants to use you. Don't stay so focused. Don't stay so focused on the pain of the moment. 
But look ahead. Look ahead. Your pain and your suffering is not just about you. for you, my child. I have a purpose and a reason for living. Seek me. Seek my purposes and seek my will for your life. Stop chasing after frivolous things. Stop chasing after things that do not last. But seek my purposes for your life, says You feel that you are not going to make it out. My fire is not to consume you nor to destroy you. But I am refining you. I am making you into that which I desire of you. I love you, my daughter. I love you, my son. I am making you into that which brings me praise, glory, and honor. Oh, trust me. In the midst of your pain and your sorrow, I have not forsaken you. I have not left you. I, I am at work. I, the Lord, am at work in your life. You are in the palm of my hand. Trust me, says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is not done with you. I've been there and I can preach this because I have lived it. You'll go through times, sometimes seasons that last years, not weeks, not days, not months, years that are hot. And it's one thing after another, after another, after another. And God will use those things. God will use those things to mature you spiritually. God will use those things to help you find the gifts in which He has placed in you, strong, uh, strong thing, which you are things that you are good at. He will bring forth in your life special anointing that He will bring forth in your life. He will help you to, to clearly see your purpose. You know one thing that I found out the fire does in life? It'll burn away all the things that are not as important. I have found that through fiery trials, through the refiner's fire, you will start seeing God's purposes better. Because you will stop being consumed by things that just don't matter as much anymore, Brother John Roberts. Amen. They will fall to the left and they will fall to the right. And that's when you'll start getting more God-focused and God-centered. Yes, Lord. And, so, and it's hard, though, when you're in the midst of those things. Yes, Lord. You're saying, I'm never going to get out of here. But I tell you today, just like Joseph, he came out of that, didn't he? Lord. It was a long season. It was a lot that he went through. But God brought him. He came forth just like Job. And he came forth like gold. He was better than when he went in. Yes, Lord. 
What you're going through is not wasted. There's something after that, but in order you to get you to that, to prepare you, Amen. to get you ready for what God has next on His agenda, right. He's got to take you through some things. Amen. He's got to take you through some things. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And you can decide this morning that I'm going to trust Him. That I'm going to let the Master work. Come on. Or I'm going to get mad and I'm going to give come up. On, come on, right. come on. One or two things you can do. You can get mad and get frustrated and give up. Or you can surrender to the hand of the potter. And I'm telling you right now, that isn't necessarily an easy thing to do. And it's something you have to do over and over and over again. But what he has in store for you is so much greater than where you are right now. You, There's better things yet to come. You thought everything was meant for evil. What's going on in your life right now? You see it just simply as evil. It's evil as evil. I come serve on. a God that takes things that we think yes. are evil, what the devil yes. meant is evil, and uses them for our good. Amen. Uses yes. them for yes. good. Yes. The prison, being sold into slavery, being betrayed by your brothers, that's a terrible thing. But God turned it around into something right. good. Being lied on by Pharaoh's wife. That was something terrible. But God turned it into something good. So just so you feel, I've been going through some terrible things. I've been betrayed. I've been lied on. This and this and that. Can I tell you something? Never fail in your faith because God can still turn that around. This but He's using those things. He's using those things in your life. Just because it's bad, just because it looks bad, Come on. does not mean he's not using it. <laughs> right. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Come on to the music. I preached long, long enough this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet all over the house. <laughs> I'm moved by that word this morning. That you're not going to be consumed in this fire. You think you are. You think that you're not going to come out. But it's never meant to consume you. It's meant to refine you. It's never meant to destroy you. To break you where you completely give up. That's not the purpose of God refining fire. The purpose is to make you better. To improve you. To mature you. To grow you. That's what God wants to do in your life. Amen. I've been there. I've fought it. I have fought him yes, during those times of yes, my life. Yes. I fought him and I struggled. With anybody else done that before? Come on. Yes. We just want the exit. We just want to help God. We want to yes. just make it easier. That's right. Come on. You don't grow in easy times. Oh, right. Oh, you do yes. not grow in easy times. God has to put some pressure on us sometimes. And I want to be encouraging you this morning not to give up, but to keep on keeping on. One day at a time, one hour at a time sometimes. And you keep relying and trusting on Him and the plan that He has for your life. Your plans may have not have come and turned out like you thought they were going to, but I'm telling you this right now, His plans never fail. Amen. Your plans may have faltered and you say, well, that's not the way I thought my life was going to turn out. God never says that. This ain't the way I thought it was going to turn out. When His Word goes forth, it accomplishes what He sent it to do. He's working in your life. He's going to accomplish a good work and a good thing in your life. But you've got to trust Him until you get to the other side of it. He's refining you today. This morning you say, Pastor, I've been in the refiner's fire. I've been in the refiner's fire. I, I, I'm a little weary. I feel like I'm just about to, to break. I can't go much further. Can I encourage you to come fall down before the Master today and, and reaffirm and say it again, Lord, I surrender. I surrender today. Maybe you need special prayer in some way this morning. I'd like to pray for you today. 
He's refining us. He's working on us. Why? There's greater things. There's greater work to be done in His name. Would you come this morning as we begin to sing? They're going to sing today. The altars are open. You need special prayer in some way. You're struggling in some matter. Can I invite you to come today as they sing this morning?